Hi there. My name is Cheche. In this presentation, I will be discussing file decay as it affects file recovery. File recovery is an important part of digital investigations, but up till now, we are unable to determine beforehand during a digital investigation if previously deleted files can still be recovered. We do not have any empirical data sets and we do not have theoretical foundations upon which to make such predictions. Um, and so in this presentation, I will be discussing a new tool that we developed called the Distributed Digital Body Farm. The, the, the Distributed Digital Body Farm is, a, is an application that we install on computers to monitor files after they have been deleted. We hope to collect uh, data about the rate at which files decay, as well as the pattern they exhibit when they decay. And we believe that we can use this information to make predictions on the possibility of file recovery after they have been deleted. And before I go into the tool itself and the methodology, I would like to talk about the concept of a body farm. Now, a body farm is um, it's native to forensic anthropology. In forensic anthropology, a body farm is a facility that is dedicated to the study of human remains, you know, or the decay of human remains. A human remains is subjected to different environmental conditions, like a water, waterlogged area, an open field, or infested by rodents. And then um, anthropologists will see how the body decays based on these conditions that it has been subjected. And knowledge from this kind of research has been used you know, to solve homicide investigations and use generally in law enforcement. You know, we're able to determine important information like um, cause of death or time of death. And even it is even used for body identification you know, in certain cases. Now we are borrowing a leave from uh, forensic anthropology and we are designing a distributed digital body farm. And this is a known application that will be installed on computers in remote locations. And the application will have the capability to collect data about files that are deleted. You know, and this data will be sent to a central location where we can collect them and then analyze them. Now, we designed this application to be installed on computers that we do not control. And the reason is because we want to collect information um, that is um, real life data from real users and not data that is created in laboratory that may not, you know, that may not um, provide useful uh, data to us during analysis. And in conducting this research, though we did not collect any personally identifiable information. And we also did not collect the contents, the data contents of the files that we're monitoring. We only collect files, about, uh, uh, rather we only collect data about how the files decay. Now, this is the methodology and as well as the implementation. Now, the, the tool that we have developed has five components. A file system filter driver, also called the mini filter, a Windows service application, which is a, a long running application without the user interface that runs in the background. And so it does not interfere with you know, the user's ability to use the system. Um, a database implemented in um, SQLite, a Python script that is compiled into an executable program, or, um, as well as a central database or repository that is developed using um, AWS S uh, S3 Pocket. Now, the methodology that we applied is that typically user applications will make a request to the file system to delete files using a delete system call. Now, what we did is to place uh, a mini filter or a file system filter driver in the middle of that communication so that when the system call moves from the user application, we intercept the call before it gets to the file system. And we need to do that because once the call gets to the file system and the file is deleted, you know, the chances of getting the file information is heavily reduced. So we intercept you know, the, the call and then we extract the information about the file, that is the file metadata, things like the name of the file, um, the full file path, um, um, the, the number of sectors and the addresses of the sectors. Now this information is intercepted by the mini filter and then passed to the Windows service application. The Windows service application uses the addresses of the sectors occupied by the file to locate the position of the file on the disk. And then it, it computes hashes, MD5 hashes of the sectors of the file on disk and then populates a database with this information. Once it's done with this, it tells the mini filter that 
it's done processing the file. And the mini filter releases, you know, the delete system call, it gets to the file system, and then the file system deletes the file. Now, now that the, the file has been deleted, we can now start to monitor. But before we can monitor, we have to have a mirror, you know, an image of what the file looked like before it was deleted. And that is why we intercepted and collected all of that information and stored it in the database. Now, at a set time every day, we check to see if the file has started to decay or if the sectors have been overwritten. So the Windows service application runs the script. The script goes into the database, collects the sectors of the file as well as the hashes of the sectors stored in the database. It goes to do the same locations in the, on the drive. It collects, you know, it hashes, you know, computes hashes of the sectors of the file on the drive and then makes comparison with what we have in the database. If there is a match, it means the, data, the, the sectors of the file is still intact. If there is a mismatch, then we update the database that those sectors have been overwritten. And then we no longer monitor those sectors because now we put a timestamp and we know when they were overwritten. Now, once the database is fully updated, you know, a zip file is, uh, it is compressed into a zip file, and then it is sent over the internet to the central repository from where we can collect this information and then we can, um, analyze the data that we have. Now, we in this uh, test that we conducted, we monitored uh, 12 computers and we monitored over, over 100,000 files, you know. Now, the information that we collected from the files are the file types using file extensions, the size of the files, the category of the files, either user files, application files, or system files, or other types of files, uh, the number of, se uh, of sectors that the file has, as well as the type of disk from which um, the file was deleted. Is it a hard disk drive or a solid state drive? Now, like I said before, there were 12 computers in this test, and we, um, um, we observed these computers in different time zones. There's a reason for that, but there's probably not, not enough time for me to go into that right now. Now we, the number of files were 110,108, and then we monitored them for 30 days. Now we use this data that we collected to, um, to build a linear regression model, you know, and we use different um, thresholds. That is, we looked at it at 25, we, we looked at 25% of the files, looked at the regression for 25%, we looked at the regression also for 50% and 75% and 90, 95%. We wanted to see how the how 95% of the files were decaying, as well as 90% of the files, 75% of the files and 50% of the files. Now this helps us have a kind of a, a better view of what's going on, you know, as compared to just having, you know, one regression model to see how everything is going. Now, the way we use this model is if, if a file is deleted and we want to determine what happens to the file after 15 days, now we go to the horizontal axis, we go to day 15, we trace it to maybe the 95th percentile curve if we want to determine what happens to 95% of the files after 15 days. And then we trace from the uh, 95th percentile curve to the vertical axis. And that tells us how many sectors each file will have lost on the average after 15 days. And this model tells us that about 55,000 sectors will have been lost per file, you know. And so that tells us that if the file we're investigating has less than 55,000 sectors, then the chances of recovering any fragments, you know, is now, you know, almost non-existent. You know, but if the file has more than 55,000 sectors, then there is a chance that we might recover some fragments. And you know, doing digital investigations, recovering fragments are important, not just the whole file. Even if we can just get fragments, that's enough, that may be enough to prove you know, that, that, that a particular file or a particular piece of artifact actually resided in the computer at a particular point in time. Now, we also looked at how the patterns exhibited by files on hard disk drive versus files on solid state drive. And here we see that hard disk drive decays slowly at the beginning, you know, and gradually rises, but solid state drive decay quite rapidly, you know. And th this is consistent with what we, we know about how files decay on both types of, uh, of, of media. We also looked at files by category. 
we looked at application files, system files, and user files. Application files are created and deleted by, applic by installed applications. Uh, system files are operating system files. So they are created and deleted by, operating, by the operating system. And the user files, of course, are created and deleted by user files. Now we see that the average size of user files is larger than that of all the other files, or the other types of files. And so user files decay faster. So this is more a function of the size of the file than the, the category of the file. But it is important to mention the category as well because files in the user category are usually larger than all other types of files. So they occupy the larger surface area. So they tend to decay faster. Now we also looked at system load analysis to see how writing to the drive affects the decay of files. In this uh, particular computer that we tested, we see that the red line actually tells us how many sectors have been overwritten. And the blue line tells us how much we are writing to the drive. And for within the five and the uh, 15, there appear to be some correlation, you know, where we have, um, where we have more writes to the, to the drive, we also have more uh, sectors decaying. That is also mirrored by the graphic on the, on the right as well, where this, the graphic on the right tells us how much bytes we are writing. And if we look at it also between the 5 and the 15, there appear to be a correlation between the number of bytes that are being written to the drive and the number of sectors that are decaying. This is also a, a similar one also that where we see that there's a correlation between like the um, 7.5 and the 17.5, we see that where one graph rises, the other also rises. You know, this shows that there is a correlation. If the correlation does not exist all through, but at certain points, you know, we find that there's a correlation. Same uh, information is mirrored on the graphic to the right. But this time we're looking at the sector decay uh, versus, you know, the number of bytes written. In this other um, computer, we do not see uh, a significant uh, correlation between uh, writing to the drive and the sectors that are decaying. And this could be because this is a really large drive, one terabyte, less than 10% of capacity utilization. It is possible that the sectors that we're monitoring at, uh, are residing on one part of the drive. And then the, um, the, the, the the data that we are writing to the drive is also being written to a different part of the drive. So there is actually no correlation because we're writing, to, we're working with two different locations on the drive. This is also um, another one where the, we do not see a significant amount of correlation. Um, but this particular drive, it's a very aggressive solid state drive. And so it is possible that, you know, before we start writing to the drive, uh, garbage collection, um, and all the other mechanisms like uh, way leveling and trim command have already taken care of the data you know, after deletion before we even start writing. So there's no correlation between what we are writing and, you know, and the data that we're monitoring because the key is actually affected by so many different factors. And it is really difficult to say that only one factor actually affected the key. Typically, it's a combination of factors that affect the key. So it's no surprise that one particular factor may or may not have you know, an effect on how uh, the sectors of the file decays. Now, we also um, did a, a prediction. What we did was that the model that I showed before, we used 12 computers, you know, to collect the data and build the model. Now, to test the, 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 uh, the accuracy of our model, we took a different computer altogether, and we collected 12,000 files from that computer. Now, we use our model to make predictions. And so, our model tells us that for 75% of the files, on day zero, they should lose an average of 149 sectors. And when we use our model to, 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 when we compare that with what we got, you know, looking at this new set of data, we were 56% correct. Now on day five, our model says that each file should have lost about 500 sectors and we were 90.3% correct. And as we go down from the zero to the 20, the accuracy of prediction gets better and better. We also looked at 90% of the files as well as 95% of the files, and we found similar results. Now, in conclusion, um, this phase of our work, we developed you know, a tool as well as a methodology for predicting how files, you know, for studying how files decay. 
And then the distributed nature of the tool, you know, helped us to um, collect data from remote locations without actually interacting physically with the owners of the computer. Also, the models gives us insight about the process of file decay. Now, the future goal that we have for this work is to generate a large data set and also construct um, a self-learning model upon which, you know, which we can use to make predictions you know, about how files decay, this time on individual file level, as opposed to what we did here, which is looking at the group of files. Now, for reference purposes, we have a GitHub repository where we, can, we have um, um, the program files used for, for this uh, research, as well as um, other important information. We also have two papers that are currently um, about to be released. One of them was um, presented in, in January at the International Conference on Digital Forensics. The second one will be presented in August you know, at the um, Cybersecurity Experimentation and Test Conf uh, Workshop, which is uh, a part of the USENIX Security Conference. Uh, this is all I have. I want to thank you very much for your time.